Hello everybody, this is uh, Taff coming with another Taff's Word now. Um, again, from the car. If I can readjust this bloody camera, I'll tell you what, it's a pain in the ass sometimes. Um, yeah, so coming in from the car because um, time can be quite constrained at times, especially with a new job, so uh, sometimes it's pretty much a matter of i got to do it as and when I can. So, um, as you can see, the camera's bouncing around a little bit, going through a uh, residential area. I should try and keep this for when I'm on the road, uh, uh, the, the the faster, longer roads. Um, so, anyway, yeah. So, we um, got the win on the weekend, much needed win. We were on, if we hadn't won, it would have been a um, 10 games without a win. But, yeah, 10 winless games. Uh, I know two of them were Tottenham. Which you can kind of you know can sort of forgive us for, but at the same time you know we're talking one of them was Morecambe at home, uh, Port Vale away, which we should have won. Uh, Mansfield and Lincoln away were embarrassing, you know performances. So it has been a bit of a bleak period for us in a, in an otherwise great season in comparison to last year. Um, I do believe there are times during the season that we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot a little bit um, whether it be um, poor team choice or leaving players eight for whatever reason or making the wrong subs or playing the wrong tactics against the wrong teams but end of the day Flynn's the gaffer now um, he saved us I mean that was the turning point obviously last season was Wesley eight Flynn in so Flynn was the one of Flynn and his team the ones that turned it round. Um, he's obviously kept the, the the better players of that team and put some good players in with them. But um, a couple of them players who have done well in some games and haven't done quite as well in others. Uh, two of those players that I'll pinpoint is Matt Dolan and Frank Newbley. Uh, Newbley is the one a lot of people are talking about. Matt Dolan, on the other hand, um, as much as he's brilliant with the set pieces, he can find a really good pass still a bit too inconsistent for me at this particular moment and doesn't get stuck in in the centre midfield as much he doesn't close players down I mean they're standing off but they're standing right off <clears throat> I, I'm a fan of standing off to uh, to restrict the space for the players to move into or play the ball into um, when you're standing off so much that you're giving them the room to, do, to, 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 to play the balls that they want to play then that's when we've got a bit of a problem and that's one thing I have been noticing from Dolan is that he doesn't close down their immediate space but then if he wants to stand them off you know, it's all about uh, draining out the, the space that they would try and run into or play the ball into um, for me Dolan doesn't quite position himself well enough to do that but other than that, it was a good win on the weekend <clears throat> and it was absolutely brilliant to see Josh Sheehan get a start and then obviously get a goal. Just goes to show if he is fit and ready, he should be playing every game. And I have absolutely no doubt that when we play Luton on the weekend, Josh Sheehan will be playing. I have no doubt. And if it was me, um, I think what I would go with is Sheehan, Lab, L uh, Labardi and... Um, Toza in the centre midfield because if Bennett because Bennett came off the bench if Bennett's ready Bennett should get a game centre half uh, if we're playing if we're playing the 5-3-2 the team should be well obviously Pipey was a, a late drop eight because of it because of illness on the weekend so he should be back but um, I don't think Flynn will want to drop Robbie Wilmot if that's the case so I fear that Wilmot will play a central midfield role, which for me does not suit him at all. Um, if, if Wilmot's to play, it's got to be as an inside forward or as a winger. Uh, well, I like him on the on, on an inside forward because he's good at cutting in, but then at the same time he's good at putting the balls in the box as a winger. So let's say he's, he's a utility wide man. Um, I wouldn't be playing him central midfield. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't have the positional awareness to be a central midfielder. He doesn't um, close the ball down well enough to be a central midfielder, although he defends well down the side. He doesn't quite defend quite as well from the centre of the park. And for me, he, he needs to be running the ball in, into space and getting the ball at the box. 
I don't think he makes a good part of a three-man central midfield. So if it was me, this is what the team would be on the weekend. It would be obviously day and goal. Uh, Pike would have to get back at right back because we'd need a bit of muscle on the team against Luton. Uh, Butler at left back, three at the back with um, White, Dimitriou and Bennett. Um, obviously O'Brien's still injured as far as I'm aware. Um, uh, a three-man midfield of um, Sheehan, Labardi and Toza. And then up front it would be Amond and um, it would be uh, Paul Hayes. I think Newblay didn't, he, he, he'd done a couple of good things when he came off the bench, but for me he didn't do enough to push Amond or or Hayes out of the team. Although Amond got taken off early in the game. Um, I believe maybe if one of those strikers had to be dropped, it's most likely going to be Amond. Uh, Hayes had a good game again, scored a goal again. Got to keep him in the team, basically. He played 90 minutes and still looked good at the end. Still got into the right position to score the goal in, in injury time. So for me, Hayes has to be a starter, 100%. So we're where are we going from here now? We're five points off the playoffs and playoff talk has reignited but people don't forget we won the game on the weekend but before that game it was quite unanimous that the playoffs were over <coughs> regardless of the amount of home games we got left. Ten games left, seven at home, three away. Personally I'd be pleased if we finish top ten and I'd be even fucking more pleased if we're the ones who relegate Barnet and Wesley. And uh, we have a few select songs ready for that, so uh, be ready for that. That's, I hope we travel well to that one and give the guys some help. Because uh, unfortunately, Barnett's fate, uh, fate was sealed when they decided to hire him. Who would hire Graham Wesley after what he did with us last season in a relegation battle is absolutely beyond me. I'll never, ever understand that. Never, never, ever understand it. Unbelievable, honestly. So, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's still a bit of bitterness about Wesley. He, he bullshitted his way in, in, in nearly relegating us, you know, and, and taking money from us. You know, we're a fan's own club, so that was our money. You know, he's taken our money and nearly relegated us with his, his, his bollocks natter. So, yeah, I am still a little bit uh, peeved with Wesley. But, end of the day, he's gone. We stayed up. We're having a great season he's going to get relegated by the looks of it so for me well, we can go there we can win and then we can uh, celebrate his relegation and for me that will be a very very good day indeed so uh, but the most immediate game is the one to talk about at the moment it's Luton um, I feel like we really owe them one because we haven't beaten them since that um, that cheat win against us last season um, they beat us 3-1 fairly um, this season but uh, they're on the fall at the moment I mean they drew last night at Coventry but they did come back from uh, they did come back from two goals down so you've got to wonder I mean they're still fighting that Luton team but we need to uh, play the way we did against Tottenham we need to make Luton Tottenham I know I wouldn't like to flatter them like that but at the end of the day that's what we got to do if you want to produce the, the perform, if you want the performance to beat them, All right? So yeah, I'm parking up now. This is my parking sensors. So um, comments. Um, I'm not getting as many comments on the comment section, down here. I mean, I am getting a few, but um, I'd really, really like to hear anybody's feedback on this and tell me: Should Josh Sheehan be starting every game from there on? Should Hayes be starting every game from there on? Should Newbley? be dropped, Amon got taken off early should he be dropped uh, Amon is, is capable of scoring goals in my opinion so <clears throat> I, I don't feel as though he should be dropped um, but then what else is it to talk about then uh, Pipe your Wilmot at right back because um, win back Wilmot is effective not not his best um, but Pipe for me has to start but what do you think uh, Butler at left back, yes but Dimitri was also a left wing, a left back, left wing back, and he scores goals from outside the area. Should we be seeing Dimitri Dimitrio getting forward a little bit more and trying to have those shots from outside the area? Because we've seen it many a time 
with Mickey Dimitriou hitting those shots. I mean, he doesn't always score them, but he knows how to bloody hit them. So should we be encouraging him to take more shots at goal, getting into those forward positions without leaving the gaps at the back? So could he potentially challenge Dan Butler for a left-back position, or is he too good at centre-back? A lot of questions to be asked. Um, Flynn, do you feel as though he's going to turn the corner now? I mean, in my opinion, yes. I, I think Flynn is a good manager. He's a no-nonsense, knows-what-he's-talking-about type manager. Um, he obviously knows his tactics, but he's learning how to apply them in the right in the right times and against the right teams. You know, he's learning how to do his research on different teams. So for me, Flynn is Flynn is a great manager in the making, and he's going to learn his trade with us, um, and he's going to give us success along the way. He may move on, but it may be a matter of that League One teams are hunting him, and then all of a sudden he gets us promoted to League One. So you'd be on their level then anyway. And then you may find championship teams are hunting him. And if his recruitment is good, and if our income can improve and our support can improve, then what's stopping us climbing with him? Very unlikely, of course, but there you go. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this one. Thanks all for the comments again. Been getting a lot of good ones. Had a couple of good comments from uh, some people on the weekend. And the gentleman who wanted to do the Taff Meets the Fans at Yeovil at half time. I did go rain looking for you and I couldn't find you. Um, catch me at the Luton game after the game if you're going. Uh, come and find me after the game. I'm usually around about the club shop and I, I'm either between the haze or going to the Bisley to hand in my, um, my staff pass um, at, at the Bisley and then walking up to the shop from there. So after the game, I'm usually around there. Obviously, half time. You should know where I stand at half time if you want to do it at half time as well. So uh, come back and find me. And that goes for any, any of you. If you, anybody wants to be in a Taff Beats, the fans just contact me and um, I'll uh, get a cheeky interview with you. So thanks, guys. Until the next time, cheerio for now. And of course, up the Cape